lipedema is different in different people. You all have genes that modify your lipedema and everyone's in different stages. Just in this room we have stages, stage one, two, and three. And I think as time goes on we should also not just be satisfied with those three stages. We should talk about how we can um, better define lipedema because the more you define it, the more you learn about it and the more interest you're going to generate in other people. And, and this is coming again from people coming back to me and saying this is what I did. If you take papers that are published, especially of pictures that look exactly like you, and you t whip your shirt off or, or take your pants down, you could be wearing your compression, it doesn't matter, and say this is exactly what I look like. And, and if you read this, here you go, and, but, you, but you don't give them 10, but if you give them a nice review article like the Fife article, the CME Fife, or the one that I wrote, you know, either one of those I think are very powerful because they're quick, easy, and they're, they're highly referenced, and these are, you know, MDs at, at big universities saying that this is a real entity. There's really no specialty for fat disorders right now. It can be owned by many. It's more primary care to me, you know, than anything. So I don't think, I think you just have to find the right, the, an open-minded doctor with limited but very good documentation in a short four or five sentences. You know, there's two camps. One camp that thinks that the fat comes first. The body is driving a certain fat population to grow. That fat population is purely there for storage. It, it, is, it is storing and, it, and it's probably turning over very quickly, but it, it's not going to reduce in size. If you look at the abdominal depot in men, it, it, it's really big, but it turns over very, very quickly, but yet it stays big. So. It, you know, it's kind of the same thing. It's just women's hormones generate this large amount of tissue that's um, only job is storage, although it's metabolically active, and, and men store it in their abdomen. The other camp is that there is a defect in the early lymphatic endings, and, and maybe even a subtle defect in the larger connecting lymphatics. So the lymphatic system just doesn't function maximally. So if your lymphatics aren't functioning well, you accumulate a little bit of extra fluid in your interstitial fat so that you're not wicking out lactic acid as fast. So you might fatigue a little bit earlier than other people and you're not clearing out cell waste as quickly. So it's a more inflammatory type fluid. And if you take that fluid out of the tissue, you suck it out and you have a Petri dish with fat cells in it and you add it on top, those fat cells will grow like gangbusters. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason is because it's not just cell waste and lactic acid, it's full of protein and full of nutrients, which is a great environment for fat to grow. And what fat is sitting around? The lipedema fat. And so it's almost a driver for the lipedema fat to grow bigger. So I guess what you could say is that you have fat cells that, that probably all women have. That should bring you know, all the women that are listening into the fold. And men get this who have low testosterone. This fat depot compresses the lymphatics, which are already slightly dysfunctional. And that excess fluid is a rich environment for inflammation, but also for fat to grow. I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Doesn't mean that it's, it's, not, that it's wrong. And I do believe that when you continue to promote inflammation within the lipedema tissue, that that is a risk factor for growing more lipedema fat. I completely agree with that. However, there are a lot of women on this planet who are very thin and stay thin their entire lives. And yet they eat, you watch them eat and you're like, holy cow, how can you, how can you do that? They just have a great metabolism they probably have very fit genes and they, they don't develop lipedema, yet they eat the same kind of toxic food that the rest of us are eating. I also have many patients with lipedema who eat better than I will ever eat. And I mean, Linda Ann Kahn is a great example. She um, eats a, a diet that not many other people could manage, but yet it would be, it's the best for lipedema. And she's maintained her lipedema at a very low level her entire life but her lipedema is still there. So if it was just the inflammation, she should not have lipedema. 
There's no easy biomarker in the blood. There's no easy biomarker in the tissue, which is why I got so excited about the homeobox genes. I feel like that, you know, that's something. And that homeobox gene has nothing to do with inflammation. It has more with, it, it's more a high level factor that drives the, the structure of a tissue in many, many different ways and is influenced by outside hormones really doesn't, it probably links to inflammation somehow, but it's not the main driver. Normally our fat is in globules, and these are very soft globules that glide along tensile fibers, um, and it's very, it's, it's very fluid, very water. Everything flows and, and moves easily past each other. When fluid pools around a fat globule, instead of being um, you know, a flatter shape that's malleable, it begins to round up in fluid, right? As fat does, right? So it rounds up and then it stays like that and it's got now this fluid around it, which is inflammatory, and that causes a fibrotic process to occur. Fibrosis is the end stage of inflammation. And so the outside of that fat globule becomes fibrous. So when your hands touch down, you feel this round ball that's firm on the outside. And then you can imagine now many, many of those little balls next to each other. And so if you, as you roll your fingers over the tissue, you're gonna feel these little balls. And a lot of times, actually, they, they, they clack against each other like billiard balls, clack, clack, clack. So there's probably a little bit of calcium mixed in there as well. I seriously believe that lipedema fat uh, can be changed. I do not believe that it's just liposuction, we're done. Because that's kind of where you guys were, you know, years ago when, when you want, went on the internet and you said there's nothing there, there's nothing you can do. And, and now here we are saying you can only do liposuction. And I just don't believe that to be true. I think we can come up with the tools. And I think it's a multi pronged approach. It's not here's your pill, here's your wrap. You know, it's, it's here's your compression, your wrapping, your exercise, your diet, your supplements. And since we know the pathway, which hopefully you know, with Mortimer's work we will know, um, how can we modify that pathway? Can we actually cause the fat to? to recognize that it's not needed anymore and to go away. So how do you reduce the water that's present in lipedema? So some people have more fluid in the lipedema fat um, than others. And so the more fluid you have, the more you're gonna respond to manual lymph drainage compression, you know, pool therapy, you know, all the nine yards. So that's how you get the fluid out. But I think it's more than just getting the fluid out because it comes right back. And then you have to get it out and it comes right back. So it's more of improving the overall flow through the tissue. And that's not just dependent on treating the fat. You have to actually treat the conduits for the flow. What are the conduits? The conduits are your blood vessels because that's how the fluid gets in and your lymph vessels because that's how the fluid gets out. So, um, you want to maintain your vessels, both your blood and your lymphatic vessels, to be as healthy as they possibly can be. And this includes anti-inflammatories, and usually not the usual anti-inflammatories, um, because inflammation is a very complicated process. It has multiple steps, and you want to inhibit the inflammation that's generated around the vessel. And usually that, the focus of that are those matrix metalloproteinases, which line your blood vessels. If they're all activated because of the inflammatory fluid that's around it, then that causes the basement membrane to dissolve around the blood vessel, and then the vessel pooches out. So if we could inhibit those enzymes, and there's, there be, there's gonna be different ways to do that. You could either inhibit the inflammation around it and then that will decrease the number of enzymes that get activated, or you can directly inhibit the activity of those enzymes. And the way to do that is by using bioflavonoids. And bioflavonoids are found in, the, they're the, what gives us the colors in our fruits and vegetables. And you can also supplement with your favorite bioflavonoid, whether it be quercetin or milk thistle or grapeseed extract or horse chestnut seed extract. If you can improve the health of your blood vessels, help your lymph vessels pump a little bit more and improve their health too, then you'll keep this flow going and then you supplement with exercise and pool therapy and your compression, your manual lymph drainage. So it's a, I mean, I, th I think we should think of it more as flow rather than just treating the fat tissue. It, it, yeah, it's a whole package. System. It's a system. So when you're on a, a vibration machine called whole body vibration, what does it do for a person who has lipedema? So, there's one trial that 
has shown that whole body vibration improves lymphatic flow. And it, it's kind of like, um, it's a different way of sending waves through your tissue. You can either send waves through your tissue in the pool, you can do it by having somebody rub on the tissue and send a wave through. You can do it by vibration. But basically what it's doing is it's actually moving the lymph through your lymphatics. If, you, if you're blocked, if your lymph nodes are full of fat, they're not clear, you're not getting flow, it actually probably is not a good thing for you. Interestingly, some women with lipedema you know, love the cold. Some women with lipedema love the heat. Um, it, it, it's hard for me to, to figure out exactly why that is, but if you think about it, um, again, we're all a pressure vessel, right? We've all got fluid flowing through us, so in cold weather, what do we do? We constrict, right? When you constrict, what happens? You get hypoxia in certain areas of the body. A lot of times, it's right here on the hips, right over the, the concentration of lipedema fat that you get this hypothermia. When there's hypothermia, there's poor flow, there's hypoxia, what does hypoxia do? Generates inflammation. And I think that's skin brushing really helps, you know, bring back, if you have a hypo, you should feel, if you feel hypothermia, brush that up, or get a vibrator and, and give yourself a good little vibration, or, you know, just warm yourself in that area, and, or, you know, even just a little bit of smacking, just to get the blood flow back into that area, because the more hypoxia you generate, the more inflammation, the more that lipedema fat's gonna grow. But use everything as a tool, and if, it, if it's not the right thing for one person, that's okay, but it might be right for somebody else. And I think, you know, one thing that I, find on the groups when people are chit-chatting about things is when something doesn't work for someone they champion that this does not work but somebody else is using it and their lives have completely changed we have a lot of work to do to move forward and there's a lot of questions that are unanswered you know why does someone develop it only down to their knees but yet why does somebody else have just stage one but it's all the way down to their ankles what's determining that is it all genetic or is there something environmental that we can tell our daughters and our nieces and our granddaughters to do to at least keep their lipedema in check early on.